Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to my session uh, about open source component uh, security in CI CD process. And uh, before we we'll, uh, dive deeper to the uh, technical parts and uh, overview of our software composition analysis tools, uh, let me first introduce myself. My name is Vitaly Davidov. Um, I'm application security lead at JFrog. Uh, I've been a developer for many years, uh, and now I'm uh, responsible for JFrog uh, tools and uh, product security. Uh, and what uh, will be our agenda today? So we just want to uh, do the short recap of the DevSecOps and DevOps. So what the differences and why we need security to be part of our uh, DevOps process. Uh, we'll review different uh, security tools uh, uh, we can use as part of our development uh, program. And specifically, we will talk about third-party composition analysis tools. And we will review capabilities and features uh, which can help you to do it uh, to, to integrate security and uh, composition analysis uh, to more smoothly in your pipelines. Um, and we will also cover some other best practices uh, and details. So uh, let's get started. Uh, I think I don't need to explain to you what is CI CD and what is DevOps well, on the <laughs> DevOps stage conferences, but I just want uh, to be sure they're all on the same line. So we actually have uh, our development lifecycle process divided by two main parts, continuous integration, continuous uh, deployment, and continuous delivery. Uh, so we have a lot of uh, stuff on the CI part uh, and on the CD part, including uh, a lot of testing, uh, tests on the continuous integration part, like unit tests uh, as part of the, uh, the deployment, uh, development, sorry, uh, step, uh, integration test, uh, code reviews, etc. We also have a lot of uh, tests, uh, functional tests and uh, smart tests on the continuous delivery and continuous deployment. Uh, so, but what about security? Uh, let's talk about the, the process of the CI-CD process and what is the DevSecOps uh, introduced here. So the first of all, uh, we're talking about the, the paradigm. Uh, as DevOps and DevSecOps, they are both some kind of paradigm, including uh, what we are doing with people in our organization, in processes in our organization, and technology, in order to support actually the agile development and DevOps uh, or DevSecOps uh, processes. So first of all, people, yes, we need uh, someone from the security team to be part of our development uh, developers uh, team or DevOps teams, as we did for DevOps. So we have DevOps engineer, and now we have DevSecOps engineer. In most cases, an organization is the, uh, we are talking about the same person. Uh, processes, okay, the process is the same process, CI, CD, but we're going to add security activities or security steps uh, to it. And we want to have all these process to be automatically uh, proceeded as possible. So we don't uh, want to have security guys to be part, to be manual uh, action on our CI CD uh, because it might be a bottleneck. Maybe we don't have security team in place, et cetera, et cetera. So we, we want to run our process automatically. So in order to do that, we need to integrate security automation tools to be part of our CI CD process. And that uh, that the technology part we will talk about today. Okay, uh, just to recap, uh, here is the graph. I think it is well known. Uh, graph explains the uh, you know map between the different stages of our development process and the cost of fixing uh, issues. It's not only related to security; it's also defects, uh, bug. Uh, bikes in our code, flaws in our code, and also security issues. So as you know, uh, so we want to catch it as 
close to the coding steps or unit test as possible because later on the production and the release stage it will be must uh, it's going to be the uh, very cost effective so we will pay a lot of uh, a lot of money to provide the patches to all our customers and also we will spend the time to fix uh, uh, fix uh, the problem uh, etc so okay I just want you to uh, to be this uh, uh, this graph in your in your hand, uh, where we're talking about the different stages and when we are going to test uh, our software for security. And now, uh, I want to introduce you just a brief introduction on the security tools we have, and we will start. Uh, you know, we can split all all the security tools, all the automation security tools and four main uh, parts, it, uh, infrastructure scanning, uh, static analysis scanning, third party scanning and dynamic scans. Uh, today we will talk about the third party scan and I, uh, I will explain why it's so important it, and kind of must to do. But uh, as you can see, we have, uh, we have uh, many options here, uh, a lot of tools uh, for security and integrate it to, to our process, CICD process. So first of all, static analysis tools or SAST. Okay, um, in this case, uh, we're talking about the very, very early stage in our, uh, in our development process. It's uh, uh, in the implementation phase, part of CI. Uh, SAS tools just go through the static uh, static code, our source code, and find try to find uh, security patterns like hard coded uh, keys or passwords inside the code, or some some kind of uh, lack of the input validations, etc. Uh, and once uh, these two see something uh, in our code, some kind of smell or some bad practices in our code or vulnerability, uh, it can just as you can see here as an example. It marks uh, this line, and developer will see it and can fix it immediately. So why it's good? Uh, because we are uh, first of all we can see exactly the place where the problem exists. We can change it on the implementation phase, which is very very early stage in our CI/CD process. It's very good. Yes, it's a lot of false positives uh, exist on the SAS, and it's. Uh, in some cases, we cannot uh, scan only our code, but we need to scan uh, all the build. Okay, once we merge to the master, for example, uh, then we're running this uh, SAS scanner, and it might take a lot of time. Uh, like, think about uh, thousands of thousands of code now merged to the master, for example, and you will get two hours, three hours, five hours just you now just to, to run the SAS scan. So in some cases, SAS static code analysis is not so suitable for our automation process. Uh, okay, so next one is the dynamic scan. A dynamic scan is an opposite for static. Uh, it just needs to have the running application. Uh, we're actually running the task uh, too as part of our functional test or integration test. Uh, and dynamic scan works on the request response paradigm. So it send the request with some kind of malicious payload, uh, receive the response and understand if this attack succeeded or not. Again, it's, it's, it's a very good uh, testing uh, tool. It might test uh, running application for real issues. So it's uh, less false positives here, but the problem again, it might take, might take time to run dynamic scan hours. And also the problem here that I have only the request, uh, which is reproduced problem on my system, but I don't can point to exact line in the code. So I cannot just send it to my developers and, and say, okay, please fix it. Because I need as a security team uh, should provide some kind of triage and understand uh, who is the guilty here. And where's the problem? Maybe it's not in my uh, uh, our code. Maybe it's the uh, yeah, some kind of third-party code or whatever. 
Okay, so now um, let's move uh, to the next step. And I want to talk about the agile development. So in order to produce software, we need to do it very quick now uh, and semi-automation way. So, and the, the situation for now that in order to do that, the uh, developers can use third-party tools or third-party packages. So I don't need to develop something. I can just bring it for free. So I don't need to pay and I can just use it. And it will solve a lot of time of development uh, for me. So it's great, okay, it's awesome. For free, it doing a lot of things what I need uh, to implement by myself, so I don't need it. Uh, and current situation, as you can see here on the graph, uh, we have a very, very short, a very, very small part of our first party code, something that we developed uh, inside the company and all other components, we just bring it from the, uh, from the open source uh, repositories like uh, GitHub or that. And it save us time and money, but it's also introduced the problems, uh, security problems, because since this code uh, is something uncontrolled by my company, I can't, uh, I don't know who developed it, and uh, is it past uh, security scans, uh, et cetera. So it's kind of um, you now the, uh, the black box for me. And once I have problem inside third party, uh, I also receive it automatically in my code. Uh, and just to emphasize the using of open source components, as you can see here, um, in the Java, in the Python and the Node.js, the uh, now the percentage of the using of third party components rise last five, six years dramat dramatically. Uh, just uh, you know, NPM and Java, uh, as you can see here, the, uh, the peak started at around the two, 2016. This year, actually, uh, CICD automation process were introduced and we started to download a lot of packages uh, daily uh, as based on the automation process, based of the CICD process. That's why it's actually uh, goes uh, up in the, just, you know, as, as you can see here. Uh, and yes, so we, we're using components, we're using a lot of third-party components as part of our, uh, our development process. And security problem here rise, uh, you know, accordingly to the, uh, to the graph you just seen. So uh, open web application security projects, uh, it's kind of company who actually deals with the web application uh, security. They uh, uh, have the kind of always top 10 uh, security risk for web applications. And as you can see here, uh, even on the 2017, you have the new line here of the using components that's known vulnerabilities uh, is this still here. Uh, it's uh, didn't move from, from this top 10 list because we, uh, we saw uh, a lot of problems. A lot of companies were uh, just uh, you know, um, uh, damaged by third party companies for the last two, three years. Okay. Uh, Example, so why we need third party components and what we have. So here's a very example of the 10 lines of 12 lines of code, uh, just to open the port on the express as a node, uh, node system using express as the external library. We just open the port and waiting for, for requests and re receive some, uh, some very, uh, very simple hello world response. Okay, so what do you think these 12 lines or 10, 12 lines of code, how many code or how many lines of code you will see on your production environment, on your runtime environment? Here's the source code, okay? It's something that I'm, uh, I'm writing as the developer. 
but what the actual number of uh, of code will be on the runtime system i know that we are now on the on the uh, recorded session so i will not wait for for your answer the answer is as you can see so more than 18000 lines of code just because you are using express in your application as the third party so yes from one side our code, my first party code, very clear. And it's, it's uh, you know, it's a great, it's just 10 lines of code and it's doing what exactly what I need. But just a, because I bring the express model as the third party, I have thousands of code behind the scenes added to my runtime environment. And each of them might be vulnerable to uh, to some kind of uh, security uh, security violations. So that's why it's uh, we have this problem. As you can see, we have the express here as my direct as my direct dependency, but the express itself is using other packages and other packages and those packages using in other packages and so on. So we have a lot of ten dependencies, and that's why we have so much. Uh, lines of code uh, on our runtime environments just to bring the express in place. And in order to find problems on the some kind of tent uh, dependency here, uh, to do it manually, even not possible because it will uh, take a lot of time and it's uh, no, it, it cannot be part of the, of the agile or to any automation process. So we need to here yeah, some, some tool uh, which can find those vulnerabilities and understand all these all these graphs uh, and all the versions we have here. Uh, okay, some are uh, more emphasized about the problems uh, on the third party packages uh, because they are open source and you now you can use it but uh, it's not something that uh, you know you have company behind this uh, component it's just the man developer who uh, who got it uh, and once he decided to take it off from the repository we have a problem uh, maybe you remember uh, it's very famous uh, problem from 2016 on the babel uh, just you know a lot of lot of projects and thousands of projects used these uh, third party component and once developer doesn't matter for now uh, what, why he just decided to remove it from the repositories that's it thousands of projects including uh, BMW and American Express and many other companies just collapsed uh, the build collapsed or, or, or their CI/CD process failed just because these uh, developer take all parallel uh, component from the from the open source repository. So that's why uh, the so it's not only security issue, but it's also the uh, integration issues here can might be introduced. Uh, and again, so that's the that's the why it's happened. So we have actually a lot of companies. It's a very uh, very useful components. Number is not a number. Yes, uh, as you can see here. But inside, it used Babel types. Okay, that's why actually uh, all entire components. Uh, once you are not uh, be able to download this package, all your projects will be uh, will be down. So you cannot use it. The same if the Babel types are uh, were uh, uh, vulnerable for security issue. The same. So now, what is a software composition analysis? Just uh, let's talk about the what is SCA. So the SCA is the software composition analysis tools, which can scan open source software to identify uh, vulnerabilities or license risk or integrations problem. Uh, there are a lot of vendors uh, in the market in this area, like uh, JFrog X-Ray, uh, SourceClear part of the Vericode now and the Sneak and White Source and Sonatype, et cetera, et cetera. We even have the dependency check 
or was dependency check as the free open source tool uh, for software composition analysis. And I will uh, provide you my opinion uh, about using open source uh, tools here, free open source tools, <clears throat> instead of uh, you know the uh, kind of uh, paid vendors here uh, later. So we'll, we will uh, discuss. So now let's think about where we need to scan our code for third party uh, vulnerabilities, third party packages. Uh, I just divided it by three main, uh, main steps and main parts, uh, implementation part, build and deploy. So on the implementation uh, part, uh, remember the graph of the, uh, of the cost uh, cost and the steps uh, and the money for the fixing the problems. So that's the very, uh, very important. We have scan as early as possible in our CI, uh, CI process. So implementation phase, uh, we can scan, for example, uh, for ID, IDE integration plugins. If our vendor provide these ID plugin, for example, uh, 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 X-ray, uh, provided and uh, white source, etc. Uh, so what uh, this plugin can do just to avoid and download malicious and vulnerable packages uh, during the code compilation or code building. So we just, uh, so once uh, I want, as I'm using Maven, for example, uh, I want to bring uh, some jar, vulnerable third party jar uh, file to my project, it will be blocked. I will see the uh, error that okay. So you try to uh, try to download vulnerable jar file as part of your build process, part, part, part of your uh, your compilation. So you cannot do that, uh, or it's just the warning, okay? Because it depends on the policy in your company. You just can receive the warning, or actually the stop from the from the downloading this uh, this company. It depends on your uh, uh, on your decision in your company. Uh, and as yeah, so might be part of the pre-commit scan, okay? So it might be not the ID, but it's kind of a process, kind of step uh, in my pipeline, which is do the scan and can send me, okay, so you you just uh, try to, to download something that is vulnerable. So, uh, and build failed, okay? The same uh, for the build phase, okay? Once we have artifacts in place, or maybe we already, uh, merged to the master and we created our build. Now we have the all, uh, all commits in one place. We trying to, to build our release bundle. And once we do the scan at this phase, we can see also some different add-ons coming to part of our release bundle and we can scan it at this moment and say, okay, we have vulnerable packages inside. Again, based on your policy in the company, you can stop the build can fail the build or you can continue so you you can do uh do different uh, different uh, actions here and regarding the deployment it it's also very important to have uh, for example why it's a part of deployment uh, because we can add some components some packages which are not part of our deploy, uh, development pro, uh, process but some kind of you know operations uh, third parties for example uh, we we are not including web servers like Tomcat components as part of our development, uh, but it's part of the operation on our deployment part. Uh, so we we still need to 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 scan it uh, because this uh, again the Tomcat is the third party third party company. So we should scan it, but we don't have this component on the implementation on the build phase. We have it only on the deployment phase, so we also need to scan deployment phase. And also, I will talk. Uh, I will talk about it later. Uh, once we are using containers and images, we also need to scan uh, runtime containers to see if maybe during the deployment uh, time we added new uh, new components or new containers as part of our uh, runtime environment. But okay, so now we are. Uh, and we understand the big picture, but again, so I'm trying to, to talk from, from the DevOps 
uh, DevOps engineer perspective and not from the security person perspective. So, okay, so now I also need to carry on more tools. So it's software composition analysis tools. It's more tools. It's more, more uh, I need to write more scripts to, to manage it, et cetera, et cetera. So what I wanted to, to, you know, to, to provide you today is the tips and what capabilities uh, you should find to be part of your software composition analysis tools in order to help your DevOps engineers uh, to run all those scans uh, automatically without uh, informing security teams. Uh, okay, so first of all, uh, I wanted uh, uh, to provide you, you know, just to very, very high level, uh, technical technical details of uh, how actually SCA tools or software composition analysis tools, how they try to understand if we have vulnerable package inside or not. So it's very important and it's technical stuff, but so, sorry about that, but I need to do that. So we have two options. Option number one, we have the package like zip, like jar, like, uh, you know, like WAR file, uh, and we just open it. So as a, as a tool, open it. Uh, try to read all the uh, all the packages inside and just see if this package and this version exist in the vulnerability database. It's kind of very, very big uh, public uh, database. And I can see if this package uh, were actually registered as the vulnerable in this database. So it's uh, option number one, as, as you can see, all of us dependency check uh, actually doing it is also other vendors also. Uh, another, uh, strate uh, another strategy is just to predict build manager behavior, like uh, Maven, like PIP, uh, like uh, NPM. So I'm just trying from the, uh, from the configuration fast, I can understand how the build manager will create my package. Uh, okay, it's, uh, it's kind of prediction because I'm not sure so I not always can be 100% sure what exact version will be uh, on my build today because tomorrow or yesterday it might be different version. Uh, it depends on the on the how I created my Maven, uh, for example. Uh, it's kind of prediction, but the the big advantage of this strategy, I can actually see who is using what. Uh, component so I can create the visibility or some kind of uh, dependency tree of my packages so this package use this package use this package and this picture I can see the visibility and I can provide a visual representation of all the dependencies uh, in my uh, uh, in my package in the first strategy I can uh, I cannot do that okay so that's uh, what we just uh, what I just said, so you can see uh, the different visibility of the, the actually the same uh, uh, the same uh, the, the same concept. So I can see that the the root problems or the root package, and maybe I all the problems coming from the this specific component on this specific version. So once I change it or I just fix it, uh, I can close a lot of uh, a lot of uh, vulnerabilities uh, in my uh, uh, in my project just to to do one uh, one fix one change okay so where are, uh, where are my data where, where are my resources uh, regarding vulnerabilities coming from uh, as i said nvdcv uh, database it might be a vendor advisories uh, some kind of internal research uh, from the different companies, like uh, so, I know that the Sneak has the team to do the internal research of the vulnerabilities on third parties. Uh, uh, JFrog, X-Ray, we call it Zook uh, system, uh, and many others. You don't have it in the in the open source uh, tools like uh, OWASP Checker. By the way, these capabilities uh, also not part of the. Uh, you cannot see the dependency. Uh, three or dependency visibility uh, when you're using open source. Tool. Okay, so what, 
what are unregistered vulnerabilities? As I just said, so you have a big database with known or registered uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, open source tools can see that and can use it. It's the kind of uh, NIST or Mitre supported uh, database, global database, this all known vulnerabilities in place. Uh, but as I just said, the companies also do the, the, the research, internal research, and find things like not registered or uh, zero days problems, right? Just introduced, for example, we, we found this problem yesterday. There are no CVXs, there are not, uh, this, this company is still not on the, on the registered uh, database. So the, uh, you know, the solid vendors can do that, but uh, open source tools uh, cannot provide you this, uh, this capability, but it's very important. Remediation process. Okay, this is another feature that uh, I will suggest you to to find uh, on your on your on your vendor uh, on your tool. Uh, so once I know that uh, we have problem in some package, so what can I do? I want to provide a way to my DevOps engineer to fix this problem on the same automation way. So just okay, here's the problem. Okay, I can create the automatic pull request for that. Automation, automatic pull request, or some kind of pull, automatic pull request with uh, manual approval. Something, but I don't want them uh, now to, uh, to think, uh, to, to spend a lot of time to figure out how to fix it. And that's the way uh, to do that on different vendors. Uh, they can, we can create the uh, automation pull request. We will talk about it uh, in some, uh, some slides. Uh, also, but I just uh, forgot, uh, you don't have remediation process uh, on the open source uh, solutions. Okay. Affected usage. So it's also a very important feature. So yes, maybe I have critical vulnerability now and I need to stop my build. But once I can say uh, something like that, okay, yes, we have this package, but this package only used by the testing uh, testing environment. Yes, it's in production, and it's a good question why it's in production, but okay, let's uh, now put it aside. Yes, we have this package used by the test tools only. There are no any, uh, any, any option to call this functionality uh, from my, uh, my code uh, or by users. So yes, uh, it's there, but I can say that I cannot affect it on this or less affected by this. And I can say, okay, I will not stop the build. I can continue. It's okay. So it's a, it's a low priority for now. It's a low, crit uh, not low criticality uh, for, this, uh, for this build. So I can continue and I will fix it later. And it's very, very important uh, capabilities, very important functionality to say, because it will spend a lot of time. Uh, once you've, you, instead of fail the build, you can continue and say that you will fix it later. It's a, it's a huge improvement. Again, you don't have this option on the open source, uh, uh, open source tools, free tools. It's only available uh, by the, uh, the payment, pay, paid options. Uh, so, uh, okay, so regarding the automation, uh, pull request automation, as I said, uh, you actually can uh, say, okay, I can do the, once uh, I know the, the, the good version, or I know how to fix it automatically. So vendor provide me this, uh, this capability. I can do automa uh, automatic pull request, or I just can, uh, as you can see here, I'll just push the button update uh, fix per setting. And, and, and I, have, I will see the automation uh, for the pull request uh, for fix uh, this problem. Again, it's, uh, it's not uh, now 100% correct for all languages and for all situations, but uh, once it uh, exists, it will help you a lot and it will help to DevOps engineers to fix problems without uh, thinking about what is it and how and when, etc. 
artifactory registers. Uh, so it's very important uh, to be able to uh, to stop uh, vulnerable packages from being downloaded uh, as part of the build process. It's one. And also, I want to continuously scan artifacts for new vulnerabilities because new vulnerabilities might be introduced uh, now every every hour, every day. And yesterday, this package were free from vulnerable uh, from the vulnerabilities, and today, it's uh, uh, suddenly uh, it's introduced a new critical issues, for example. And uh, so we need option to scan our uh, uh, repositories uh, continuously. Uh, so, for example, it might be a daily scan. It might be scanned based on the changes. Once it, these these components changed, we automatically can run the scan. And we also want to pr provide the option to to disable download vulnerable components uh, from the, from the repository automatically as part of our uh, our build process uh, uh, i think almost all vendors now provide this uh, this capability this uh, feature again open source tool uh, you will not see that uh, containers and images scans uh, okay so first of all we want to scan uh, images and uh, docker files uh, as kind of uh, they are part of our CI process, uh, and we also want uh, to scan the running containers uh, because, as I said, uh, maybe uh, we can introduce the new uh, new packages, new changes as part of the container deployment process. Uh, so again, from the DevOps engineer perspective, once I have uh, now I have an image, and I scan the image, and I found that. Uh, the base OS, base operation system of this image is vulnerable. In most cases, uh, as the DevOps engineer, I'm not going to change packages on Debian, for example. I need suggestion to what the what the correct base image I can use. So that's a very important feature. Once I can set as the vendor tool, I can provide suggestion and say, okay, you have this base image, you are using this base image, please change it to this version or to another image, and you will remove all critical and high vulnerability. So I need this suggestion uh, to, to be provided to my DevOps engineers. It's very important, uh, and not all vendors can do that. Again, open source to Canada. Okay, uh, so now I just want to summarize uh, and just to uh, now to put the one slide uh, regarding the X-ray because I I wanted to be vendors neutral as much as possible. And so the first of all, we need uh, third-party composition tools analysis as part of our CI/CD process. I think you you understand why it's very important. Uh, you can add scans in different places uh, in your in your process. Uh, starting from the implementation phase and also on the on the runtime containers. So all these steps in your CI CD process, you can uh, integrate uh, software composition analysis to scan. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, you can you can use open source, for example, OWASP dependency check. It, it's a good tool. It will provide you uh, visibility for your third-party components and you have critical so high issues inside but again so i wanted to provide uh, the tips for features which can help you as the devops engineer to do it uh, easily and without in, 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 uh, no uh, involving security team here yeah, but unfortunately once if you are going to use uh, for example always uh, dependency check you should in, uh, involve security team because you don't have visibility for uh, you know uh, for dependency tree. Uh, you don't have automation uh, pull request. Uh, you cannot uh, you, you will not see the suggestion for your uh, base OS image and many other capabilities. Uh, for example, uh, uh, feature like uh, 
if you really use this package, yes or no. So effective, effective usage, you will not see there. So yes, from one side, it's something free uh, and open source, but it's lack of many, many uh, great and very useful features. So the decision is yours, uh, but I, I will suggest you to, once you are, the, uh, now you, you have the very sensitive, uh, sensitive software uh, to, to think about the, uh, the, the solid solution uh, for your third party, uh, third party scanners. Uh, about the JFROG X-ray, so I just want to point you of the capabilities we just discussed and the relations to the X-ray. So the X-ray is it's a software composition analysis tool uh, provided by JFROG. It's a uh, scan, might scan a lot of, uh, lot of technologies. So it's a universal security component analysis tools. Uh, it also provides, provides deep layer scanning. Uh, if we are talking about, you know, the, uh, the a complex uh, or very, uh, for images, for example, or some kind of war files, uh, which is provide a lot of lot of layers inside. Uh, it's also natively integrated uh, with Artifactory. So as we as we discussed, one of the features uh, where we scanning uh, our uh, repositories uh, continuously scanning repositories, and we provide sorry we prevent download uh, malicious component from it. It's also uh, the part of the, the X-ray recommendations or suggestions for base image or for fix for mitigations. It's also uh, part of the X-ray uh, visibility. Yeah, so we can we can see actually the uh, uh, the usage of the of this package or where is the uh, kind of dependency of uh, this vulnerable package and where we are using it. It's uh, uh, it uh, exists uh, on the JFRF platform. ID plugin. As we discussed uh, at the beginning of this presentation, uh, we can uh, use the ID plugin in order to integrate scan uh, to be part of the development environment itself. It's very, very uh, small, very, very early stage uh, in our CI process. And also uh, some additional capability, capabilities like ignore it. So one, I have problem, I have third party, vulnerable third party package but vendor of this package, for example, uh, 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 Tomcat, for example, Apache, uh, still uh, not provides the fix for this problem. So what can I do? I cannot do any action for now. I, I, I should wait so I can create ignore rules. So uh, this, uh, this scan will, uh, you know, it provide me uh, the option to uh, to continue my build, my, my CI CD process. And once the fix will be exist, I will receive notification and I can fix, uh, fix my packet level. So it's also very important, uh, important feature. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, and you can contact me by LinkedIn or by, by email. Thank you very much to be there and good day.